Welcome to Deep Thought, Why Writers Are Targeted in Revolutions. Why Writers Are Targeted in Revolutions and stuff. Uh, and this is not just, uh, you know, this is globally. Like, a lot of people don't realize, uh, I have some knowledge about politics. I was a minor when I was in college. And uh, especially dealing with uh, revolutions and everything like that. And when you see, like, different countries um, that has a military coup, which is actually the most normal way that uh, governments change hands. <laughs> That's actually the most normal way. People, just as an aside, and you know how I flow on this channel, in the U.S. there was a recent thing over the uh, voting and everything, and we're not going to get into that, but most countries don't even have that. Most countries just use the gun and just change everything. So I want y'all to think about that. But we're talking about writers, why would they be targeted? Usually, like, well, usually when the military uh, or some group changes power, usually the military, let's just be real, real quick. You'd be hard pressed to find a situation where some untrained people overthrow a country, overthrow a government, where it's just some, it's usually the military decides to switch over. I will. Power grows from the barrel of a gun. Always remember that. So some untrained people ain't changing shit. Let me just say that again. Some untrained people. You know, yeah, you've had communist China and Cuba, but it's not a normal thing. He's usually the military. So why are writers targeted, though? When there's upheavals or something, they usually go after journalists first. They will lock up the writers, the journalists, people like that. Why? Yeah, because the pen is really mightier than the sword. The pen is mightier than the sword. Now, people say, well, the sword can kill people. Yeah, but the sword can kill people one at a time. Someone with a good article, a good set of ideas, affects millions. Affects the mindset of millions. Now, I talked about media images and stuff, and I talked about television programming. Who writes that? Let me say it again. Who writes that? Who creates those programs? Yeah, they got the directors and all of that, but somebody had to write a script. You know, you got commercials getting you to do something. Somebody had to write it, you know. Or even um, if you think about it, we got whole political systems, whole systems created from writers, whole economic systems created from writers, you know. Whole religious systems, the Bible, the Quran, you know, uh, Text, everything, tablets. They're writers. And you can create a whole thing. So, you know, the idea is powerful. You know, that's why the media, I started this week talking about the media. Their whole thing is to get you to think a certain way, ideas. So when somebody, you know, when somebody wants to overthrow a system or even change a system peacefully, you hit the writers up. A writer is powerful. I mean, seriously, that's not just cliche. The pen is mightier than a sword because, like I said, a sword or even a gun, you got you limited in who you can kill right there. And that's even if you have to use it. But somebody, once somebody reads something, once they hear, read the words, and it gets, and it affects them on an emotional level, they start changing. It gets them to a certain thing. Even uh, speakers, speakers, that's a form of, that's the same as writing because a lot of speakers, when they're doing public speeches, they have a written speech, particularly politicians. And uh, a lot of people don't know that these politicians got speech writers. I actually knew a speech writer. I uh, uh, hadn't talked to him in a while. Uh, I mean, he still does some stuff. He was a writer for a prominent Republican uh, politician, very prominent. He was the speech writer for that person. That's a very, that's a very powerful thing. You know, because they create ideas, they create thoughts. They can drive some in a different direction. Like, you can get somebody, like, okay, like, there's some stuff I've written, and people have come back to me. Men and women have said, you know what, you got me thinking about something. Or you inspired something. The pen is mightier than the sword. You can change how somebody approaches something. Or you think about people can make money based off what the writer did. Like, often, I always quote, I, I love quoting uh, Napoleon Hill. Highly recommend the book. Napoleon Hill has created millionaires. He, 
it, at the very least have changed millions of lives. He was a writer. He was a writer. Indeed, in some repressive regimes, one of the things they'll do on an extreme basis, they'll burn the books. Indeed, that's why in uh, even in this country, there's some, there's some books in some jurisdictions that are banned because of what they was talking about. Because they know it can get people to think. See, you know, like I always say about this channel, it's to get you to think. And if you get people to think, all of a sudden they might start questioning stuff. They might question their place in the herd. They might question, why are they following this particular person? They might do all that, you know, because a writer is powerful. Like I said, look at the political systems. Like, okay, like a lot of people talk about communism. I don't know why, but it's obviously, it's obviously something that's losing out because even in communist China, they're very capitalist. <laughs> but look how many people are affected just by a writer called Marx writing something. Seriously, if you look at you trace a lot of things, it can be tra traced to a book, an idea. Because it's a very simple thing. Say you have a certain philosophy you want to promote. You write a book. You write a book on it. You, you put it out. Like, uh, I give an example. Uh, Ayn Rand, who wrote Atlas Shrugged. That actually influenced, she, she, she was presenting a philosophy in there, which led to uh, libertarians was led to because she was promoting the uh, policy, uh, the philosophy of uh, objectivism. And that led to the libertarians, which the libertarians, even though you have a separate libertarian party, the libertarians has some, just some influence on the Republican Party in this country. Ah, ah, you know. Not total, of course, not total. Or even, uh, the uh, you know, there's a lot of talk with the conservatives, conservative movement. If you trace it back, it was some writers who for, were talking these things. You know, you can trace anything back to a writer, and, you know, it might be some obscure right. Nietzsche, Nietzsche, when he, you know, his his thoughts and everything, shoot, that, I mean, shoot, that really changed the world. That really changed the world, because... In many ways, that led to Nazism. So writers, that thing is powerful. So when somebody wants to change stuff, they get to the writers first, prevent them from saying anything. Because, like, say, in a, a coup or a revolution or something, and, uh, uh, you know, the group, you know, group that was leading the coup or staging it, they come to power. That writer, uh, one writer, one writer can change everything. He can he that one writer he or she can write something that uh, stimulates a counter revolution a resistance. So that's the first target. Get the writers first, because the pen is mightier than the sword. I want y'all to think about that because everything comes down to ideas. Everything, everything. This whole society comes down to an idea. This political systems, religions, everything. It was an idea first. So the person who came up with the idea becomes very powerful, provided they follow it. In Christianity, Martin Luther, Martin Luther, you know, when he wrote down his principles, nailed it to the door of a Catholic church, that created Protest the Protestant religion, the Protestant path in Christianity. Look what it did. I mean, powerful, powerful. You got a whole nation, you got whole nations based on that philosophy. So, I mean, the writers, writers are powerful. I want y'all to think on that, okay? I want y'all to really think on that. So, anyway, I'll get back with y'all. Y'all have a great weekend. Peace and blessings.